Welcome to another episode of Shades of Blue. This one's a little bit different. I am Thad Bell from the Kansas City Soccer Journal. With me, I have Robert Russert. How are you today? Doing great. Good to see you again. Yeah, we spent most of the morning, afternoon, early afternoon together at Kansas City Media Day, Sporting Kansas City Media Day. Tell you what, man, those uh, new video boards are pretty cool. They are. I am waiting to see them in use. I have... I have a little qualm about how they could be used, but I've been told that they won't be used that way. So I'm hopefully <laughs> hoping they're correct. Yeah. Uh, Anything a, new like that could be implied incorrectly. And hopefully, yeah, that's not done. Yeah. One of the things I hate is a lot of stadiums will have those video boards that they can turn off the lights and back on the, those LEDs and then the, the yeah, ribbon yeah. boards and all that stuff. So they tend to overuse it when a, somebody scores. And then the photographers are left in the dark trying to get a shot of the most important <laughs> thing of the game is the celebration, not the, not the actual goal. It's the celebration. Yeah. Gotcha. So that, but that's, that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah. That's not where we went, wanted to go. Uh, one of the cool things we did was we were able to get some little short pod interviews, uh, Alanis Vargas and Stephen Afrifa together. And then we had Peter Vermees and then we had Daniel Shalloway. Yeah, I mean, Afrifa and uh, Vargas, when I went up to them, they were like all for it. It's like, yeah, get us out of here. We don't care how long you take. <laughs> and, you know, originally I was thinking uh, it's hard to do sometimes two people in that, but I think you had a really good idea of doing those two together. So that was a that was a good, well thought out plan there, Robert. Yeah, it was fun. We, it was definitely enjoyable. And uh, I think you guys will like Vargas's uh, take on our question that we we're asking everybody. I don't know. We should spoil what that is right now, though. So uh, just let it just let it happen naturally. I OK. Think. All right. We will. <laughs> All right. Uh, without a whole lot of further ado, here is our interview with Stephen Afrifa and Alanis Vargas. All right. Well, hey, Shades of Blue podcast here on the KC Soccer Journal. We have Alanis Vargas and Stephen Afrifa joining us, guys. We appreciate you coming by. Of course. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, Thad. Patrick told him we were only keeping for five minutes, but Stephen's like, you can keep us as long as you want, man. <laughs> it's nicer in here, right? A lot nicer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I kind of gave you guys a little heads up. But uh, so we're asking everybody a question today. What is your post-game craving, Stephen? What, what do you really crave after a game? Like, get me this now. <laughs> um, a lot of different options, but I think I'll go with some wings. Some wings. Oh, just had Barbe some of those here. Some Not simple bad. barbecue wings, and I'm good. There you go. All right, Alenis, wh what are you going for? Well, for what? Like, Post game, after the game, what do you want to oh, eat? What are you really hungry for? To be honest, I don't eat nothing. I just call my mom and, and my dad. I say, hey, you look at me, and they tell me, where? I say, I made my debut, serious? Oh, and my mom, my mom started crying. I say, wow, I can't believe it. I'm just, just, I just talk with my family, to be honest. Well, nice. Okay, well, then let's go this way with it. What's your favorite cooking from your mom or dad that you miss? Oh, I miss in, in Honduras, we have a national food, is baleadas. It's like a taco. Okay. But yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. I like nice. It. I miss that. So I, eat, I can't eat that all day. So <laughs> yeah, but I don't have here. I don't have here that, so I have to eat good, you know. Now, can, can you make it? No, we don't have the ingredient that 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 thing to make it. So okay, we, we got to talk to PR and get somebody to send you the ingredients. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're just kind of asking a couple of random questions here, but which defender do you think will score the most goals this year? <laughs> Great question. Oh. Oh, that's easy. Or zero. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Why, I don't right, know. Why easy. We'll tell him you said so. <laughs> I think the same Rosario is gonna score more. Yes. We, I don't we know. didn't want to make it a competition between Polito and Russell and shall we? Nah. But, so, but here's the tricky one: which one of you two is gonna score the most goals? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I prefer give the assist, but I think Steve. I'm gonna say Steven. Steve, I'm gonna score more. I don't know. I think I, I've seen you do uh, some good headers, man. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so Lennis, you know, Steven was with the team last year, so him. he's, he's kind of, you know, educated on what things are like. Um, have you learned anything from Stephen or Steven or anyone else in the club that really helps your adaptation no. here in preseason so far? No, no. With Steven, I think when the first time when I see it, I connect with him. He helped me a lot 
now when, when we are teammates, I see him all day. So he he speak with me. He say like keep calm, enjoy your moment. So we talk about anything. I think it's, it's more it's a friend for me now, and and I really learn for about everybody like Pulido movement. So I I, I look everybody. So I, I like it. Nice. How about how about you, Stephen? Because I, I know last year you came in the middle of the season, finished off college, and how big of a how big is it to be here for preseason? And who, who have you learned from the most? Um, it's been well. Last year was an experience, just getting thrown right into it. Took a little bit of time to adjust, but I would say guys like Kyrie, obviously super friendly. If you if you're in the locker room and you come in as a new face, that's the first person that's going to come introduce themselves to you. So he was a very big part of me getting comfortable. I would also say Roger. Miss him a lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those two 100% were the guys that really took me under their wings, showed me just how to move around. And coming into this year with preseason, I feel like I'm so much more comfortable just because I understand what Peter wants from the get-go. So it's not me trying to catch up to everybody I'm at the same level so yeah it's been good I talked uh, with Elena to you before we came over here about the fail harbor article and what the steps that fail harbor went through with you last year yeah. what does Peter focus on with you Steven as far as what part of your game is he wants you to develop or what instructions might he give you you know hey go for this yeah. um, obviously last year I came in as a striker um, and just throughout the year Peter uh, Z all the assistant coaches just were trying me on the wing and just figured it was the best position for me so completely changed tactics and what they wanted me to do now it's more of just me using my speed and dribbling abilities so peter number one instruction now is stay wide just be patient yeah. you'll get your moment and when you do just be brave and go at defenders just enjoy it don't overthink things because you know what to do so yeah so Alenis, we didn't ask this question. Maybe we should. You drew three three PKs in preseason. What's what are you going for for the season? <laughs> yeah, I, I I really want to keep making the same because I think that's helped me a lot because they told me like when uh, Peter told me like you have the body to go. They nobody can stop you. So go with that and you wanna make anything make and them stop you yeah so <laughs> then i feel the contact in the in the 18 and i i go to the ground so it's, there we go yeah what, what is your best strength is it speed or, or skill or no about? speed i think it's speed <laughs> yeah i really go you know direct I, yeah i think i'm fast he's another level yeah. of fast <laughs> uh, somebody told me last year you're the fastest guy they've seen at sporting i'm not going to tell you who told me that but, mm. yeah no one disagrees. <laughs> it wasn't Fontas, was it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a little dig at Fontas there. <laughs> Everyone's lightning McQueen to Fontas. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like some fans now. <laughs> uh, but he, he knows where to beat me. Oh, well, exactly. So smart. It's actually incredible. It's really smart. Yeah. With the ball, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's, a, who's the toughest defender for you guys to go up against? That's a good question. I would say... Rosero or Fontes again just yeah. as you mentioned yeah. I always first time I went up against Fontes I'm like he's not very fast so I'm gonna try to get around him they didn't work for the first couple <laughs> weeks <laughs> just which one which one has fouled you the hardest oh Rosero 100% <laughs> <laughs> that is and it's not Rosero can be uh, Casti yeah that's guy really <laughs> yeah that's go, second when he yeah. go poof, you have to be careful because he come with with the, to kill you, <laughs> they, they make you remember. So. Yeah, it's like yeah, a, they give you a little like warning. Guys better, yeah. A little warning shot. Yeah. So yeah, I thought Jake Davis might be in there, but you know, Jake mm, has his yes, moment. Yes, yeah, yeah. He, when he's losing the games, yeah, he be careful with that guy. I would have to add there. I've gotten Jake pissed off a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I felt a couple of those tackles. <laughs> so coming into the home opener, any particular nerves going into that for you guys? Well, for me, yes, because it's gonna be my first home game yeah uh, I all the game for me are always with nervous you know because I want to be I want to make good things so you you when you your emotions are you know on top so 
I feel really nervous. So everybody says, you know, okay, you get in the game, you're nervous, first touch, and those nerves go away. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, is that yeah, true? That's true? Okay. 100% true. <laughs> the first 10 seconds when you are going to your position, yeah, yeah. you are thinking for anything. Nice. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah, Steven, you're an old vet now, right? Compared to... <laughs> yeah, I still can't say that. Is, yeah, now Steven is the experienced guy, you know? <laughs> it feels a lot different than last year, I will say. I'm going all the way back to uh, Houston Open Cup. Warm up. <laughs> just did not feel right. But the second that game started, it's like all my nerves calmed down. It was just, nice. you've been doing this your whole nice. life. So. Yeah, I think you guys should both uh, just be happy with how much Peter's talked about. He feels comfortable getting you guys into the game. He hasn't always subbed as much as as this last game. So he, he feels really comfortable with you guys getting in the game. So I think you guys should be happy about that. Yeah, yeah we for are. sure. Just yeah, we are. Build, helps us build our confidence that Peter has that trust yeah. in us. So. Right. I well, think that's that's very important when you have the the confidence of the of the coach. That's all, because you feel that he support you know. So that, that if you have that, you can make anything. Well, we want to keep Patrick's support, so we're not going to keep you guys any longer. <laughs> but again, we appreciate you coming out, Stephen, yeah, so Alenis, and uh, we will see you next time. All right, all right. thanks, thanks guys. Thanks guys. Take care. All right, that was a fun interview. And anything stood out from those two guys? Uh, just their personalities, you know, they're young, they're, they're a little bit, you know, naive, right? But uh, they're here, they're feeling good about themselves, and that's a good thing. And they've looked good in training, and they've already got some game experience this year, so. For sure. Uh, next up is the man himself, Peter Vermees. Uh, anything we should spoil it there or preview it? You know, Peter, he uh, he's very open to uh, sit down and talk with us, and we very much appreciate that. And uh, it's always good to hear from the head man. Uh, he talks some cool tactics from a question that you asked, Thad. So uh, I think fans will find that definitely interesting. Yeah, because I, I know people sometimes have a one way of viewing things. So I tried to try to get him to give a little education to people and including ourselves. Next up, Coach Peter Vermees. Back with another episode of Shades of Blue interview. We have manager and how many titles do you have right now, Peter? I, I only have one. I'm the coach. That's it. Manager, whatever. I'm the coach. That's it. Uh, Peter Vermees, 500 games coached. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, third most total, the most with a single club. That That is an impressive longevity, sir. Uh I always say it only says that you've been at one place for a really long time. That's about it. And you have about the same amount of hair as you started with. Close. Close. Okay. There's a little bit. There's a little <laughs> bit going here and there. But it's, okay. I can tell you this. It's, it, was, it was brown when I started, and obviously now I'm completely gray. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's a little more gray yes. now. But. Well, hey, we, we've been asking players, so we're going to ask you too. Post game craving i know you get your little glass of wine after victories but what what do you crave food wise after he matches that's a really good question i i actually don't really eat okay. uh after the players are different right they've yeah. just burned right so much i mean i do too but not not nothing like they do right um so i'm not yeah I, i'll say this they make chicken wings here and they're in the locker room afterwards, and they're unbelievable. Right. So I would say one of those or two of those is what I'll hit, hit up. They have looked good. <laughs> they're really good. I'm telling you, they're really good. I had those ones over there a little bit ago. Those were really good. Yeah, they, they do a good job. So can I steal one in the locker room? Sure. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if that go, that's allowed. Um, we've also been asking, uh, I don't know if you can actually do this, but which defender will score the most goals this year? Oh, that's a tough question for a manager. Come on. Mm. <laughs> uh, it might it might be uh, uh, Rosero. That's been the common answer. So he's, been, he's been he's been he's uh, been even in preseason. He was a uh, his 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 aggressiveness, his his dominating nature was starting to really come out. And then I also say, like defensively, this past game. Remember at the very end, we had that wide free kick against us. I had, I had told him before the game that I said, hey, look, you, you can't, because he has sort of a free roll, and I told him you cannot allow um, anyone to beat you to the ball. And it was great because he, he basically almost like took a bite out of that ball when it came in. It was like nobody was going to deter him from winning that ball. So it was, it was great to see. But I think he'll probably be the guy from a defensive perspective that will get on set pieces for sure. So speaking, you know, a little bit of tactics there, 
You know, obviously, beginning of last season, throughout the season, and then especially uh, the other night in Houston, the midfield kind of diamond, keeping things compact. You, know, you had wingers you know, kind of at the just on the outskirts of that diamond. So are there someone in there that has a free role as far as that defensive organization, that midfield, to track a runner? Or is it all more or less a zonal compact defending? And how much of that do you really want to talk about? You know? No, I mean, <laughs> look, we still, we still come out of there. Um, and and it, it, it can look like what you're saying if you add uh, Polito as kind of the point of the diamond mm-hmm. up top. But at the end, like different different teams are going to prov- pr- they're going to they promote a different way sometimes for us yeah. to defend them as in their build up because sometimes it's depending if they come out in the back with two or they come out with three. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on how good like Mikel, who's in the middle for them for Houston, is very good on the ball. So you have to be careful on how you. You, you jump and, you know, you, you go to pressure them. And when you go do that, I would also say that we're still maybe a little bit tentative still just because sometimes your timing's not there. And mm-hmm. so you're, you're, you're guessing, you know, and then all of a sudden what happens is then you start to see some games where it's like, man, the guys were all, well, it's because they're not thinking anymore. You know, right now they're thinking a little bit like, Hey, should I go? Should I not go? Yeah. Um, but I would say that for the majority of the time, everybody has the right to kind of release and go, um, but I'm always a big believer that when you're defending, you should always do two jobs at once. You should normally take out the penetrating uh, ball away, while also knowing full well that maybe you're the guy to go pressure the ball. Um, you, you should always be always doing two things yeah. at once. So uh, beginning of the game, Ben Olson looked like he's looking over at you, or during the game yelling something, and then he was just kind of joking with you. So Aurelian was over there. You know, Aurelian's a former player of yours. So what former player of yours uh, do you really, you know, enjoy coaching against? Because there's a couple of them out there. Yeah. Um, I really don't think about yeah. the opposition in that regard. I just don't. Um, what I like about like a situation with Benny is that, you know, we played against each other mm-hmm. in the league. Um, I res- I respect Benny because I thought as a player he always he was a grinder. He worked hard. I like guys that, you know, that that put it put a good shift in, and yeah. he was one of those guys. Um, I also know that you know he he has a lot of respect for the game, and him and I get along well from that perspective. Um, so that's why we had to leave him a little banter at the end of the game as well. But during the game, you know, there might be an action here or there that we might. But normally speaking, we I don't really I don't really have a lot of communication with the other guys. And I and I and I say again, like when when the game's playing, I, I want to win. You know, I'm in this <laughs> I'm in a different nature. Yeah. Uh, I always have a lot of respect for the opponent, and because I understand what they're going through, the same stuff we are. So that's what I respect. Yeah. I, 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 I can't stand it when the other guy doesn't see it that way because, you know, some, a lot of guys don't. They just, they're just so ingrained in their thing. And if they win, they're like, take that. But they don't realize it's coming around because the soccer guides are really quick to act in this game. <laughs> just, just ask St. Louis that from last year, right? It happens with happens with all of us, believe me. I just learned I've been doing it a long time. That's why I'm a lot more I, I really am a lot more calmer in, in those types of situations than I ever was. I would still describe you as a very passionate and sometimes fiery on the sideline. With my team. Yes. With my team. But never never am I I'm telling you this right now, never am I with the opponent or their players, staff, anything like that or their fans. It's just doesn't it's not something to do. But but when you are, it does end up being a really good meme on the internet. Yeah, but that's different. That was provoked. That was provoked. They started it. I love how you knew exactly which one I was talking about. I did. Uh, you know, I've talked to players, and with you, it's been a good preseason, a good first result. Not not quite what you wanted, but it was a really good result on the road. What is your, I guess, uh, expectations for this season with what you, how you've started, where you're at right now? I mean, for sure, I want to build off of where we were last year. I think we got enough returning players that um, can can. I'm not going to say do the same thing because it won't be the same thing, right? But I think that we have this group has more in it because I also think there's health to start, and then the second part is is that 
there's quite a few younger players that have shown that they have a, the ability to make a real contribution when they enter the game. I, you know, you can give a player a chance because hey, he's he's done well, but then when he gets in the game, he doesn't he doesn't contribute. That doesn't help the team. You you need that. Um, and what it does also is, is it pushes because they're um, they're you know you got the ones and the twos and the positions. Well, they're a lot of times to the twos. And if they're doing well, that means they're pushing the ones. Now the ones have a choice. They either get taken by, overtaken by the number two, or they take their game up and then they keep pushing them and then everybody gets that much better. And that's the whole idea. Yeah, it's not been often that you've uh, brought in that number of guys that early in a game, especially with you know replacing all of the offense. Yeah, well, I say again, I, it's because those guys all deserved what they did in preseason. They played, they performed well, they worked hard. And it's only rightfully so that in that situation, right, you know, I think when a lot of some of those guys came in, we were still 0-0, and, and, and it was good. It was good because they gave us a different punch in the game. So you've had your coaching staff together for quite a while. So tell us, give us a little insight. What do you guys do just as a group for fun? What do you guys do? What, what kind of inside jokes you got? I mean, you know, well, what's it, the banter like between you guys? In Kansas City, we – we probably try to stay away from each other as much as possible <laughs> okay. because we spend so much time together, yeah, right? right? Right. And I always tell the guys when we're coming back from preseason at the very end, like the last, like we played on Saturday, right? That Saturday, the 17th or whatever it was. And I told the guys, I was like, hey, uh, tomorrow night, I'll, don't you guys all come over to my house and we'll, We'll, uh, we'll have a meeting and then we'll go out to dinner together, oh, which nice. is a big joke, which is a big joke because <laughs> we've just spent five oh, weeks okay. of doing that every night, basically, right? Yeah. And so they, they always say, you know, I'd go off, God would go over really well with my wife. <laughs> right. um, so I would say there we stay away. Normally um, on the road, it's either um, dinner the night before the game or the next morning we usually will have maybe breakfast. A bunch yeah. of us will have breakfast together. Um, but you know, there's, there's, it's also changing. I mean, you know, we're getting older, got some other young guys on the Yeah, staff. but one of you is still the party animal, right? Uh, I wouldn't say <laughs> no, that. Okay. No, I mean, there's guys that, you know, not, you know, when it's, when it's, when it's a good time, they, they can have a good time, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, majority of the time, I honestly, we're, 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 we're talking the game and trying to figure it out. And we, like I said, we probably during the season spend more time with each other than we do with our families. Yeah. So that in the off season, you go to spend a little extra time with the family. We, yeah, we do. We all we all do, um, it, unless we unless we take a, a trip abroad somewhere. But we haven't done that in a couple of years, and probably COVID's been the biggest, you know, damper on that. Without revealing locations, uh, what's like the favorite thing to go do with the family? I, I usually go to Florida, and when I do that, I'm I'm always trying to get a place right. I mean, right on the beach because. I don't want to. I don't want to have to work too hard for anything. <laughs> you want to just step out into the ocean. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that too. All right. I don't think we're allowed to keep you. Too no, we are not. Well, okay. I'll see Patrick yelling yeah, at you show. guys can. Yeah, we can keep going for a few more minutes if you want. <laughs> uh, I know one of the questions is like fans always have. You know, the formations four three three, and I and we've talked a lot, but help maybe fans, you know, give them a little three minute education on why a four three three isn't always the same thing. It's not because so having four in the back allows you to go to three, build out with three if you want. Having three in the midfield allows you to go to five in the midfield if you want to defend. You can take the three which is a holding midfielder and two attacking, and you can flip it if now you want to front screen two forwards on the other team, so you go to two and one. Up front, you can play as a holding forward. If you went to the you know, four, two, three, one, you flipped it in the midfield, now you have an underneath forward. It's completely different. Your wingers can either be midfielders or wingers. So there's there's all these nuances that you can do within the formation that you cannot do as seamlessly with the other formations. When, uh, when you have players in that 4-3-3, three, three, are you looking for players who can slide that those different spots more? Because I mean, it gives you more flexibility in-game versus yeah. maybe coaching it the day before? Yeah, like, it, like, like let, let's just use the back as a simple one. Uh, let's say you want to come out in three. 
well, you have a couple choices. You could say your right central, right central defender goes in the middle, your left central defender goes on the left a little bit more, and your right back now fills in. And so you got your three, and you push your left back higher up the field, more like a winger. And your winger comes inside as a second forward or another midfielder. You could do it the other way too, right? So the left guy, the left back comes in, right central or left central defender becomes the middle guy and vice versa, and that guy's up. Or you can send both those guys up and you can pull the defensive midfielder and now you got three coming out that way. And just in that little exchange, it, it, it you know, the decision's now gotta be made from the other team of what are they gonna do to counter that. So, pretty simple. It's pretty simple for a guy who knows what he's talking about. Well, it's, it's pretty simple in the way we're talking about it, but it, it can be very difficult to execute if you don't work on it, and, and that takes time as well. And you got to, to your point earlier, you got to find players that can do multiple things on the field, not just one, one part in the position. And, and problem solve a little bit on their own. So they do it this time, but not next time. Correct. Yes. Now, Thad may yell at me after the pod because he does that often. I want you to know that. But um, <laughs> I don't know. Has the story been told about Daniel getting the 10? Well, how did that come about? Uh, so obviously Gotti was gone. Yeah. The 10 was available. Um, everybody knows that we're looking for another player, and we are. Um, so Daniel called me up. I think he called me up or he texted me. I can't remember. And he's like, hey, I'd really like to wear the 10. Now, you guys got to understand something. Was I don't that, like. Was that your imitation of Daniel's voice? Well, not really. But you, you, you guys can imagine, like, I don't sit there and, like, I'm look, overlooking the roster and going, hey, this guy needs to get this. Like, right, right, right. Honestly, I could care less. Mm -hmm. I truly could care less. Um, but I also know that there's some numbers that go with some positions coming in to a team, right? And, and prestige for players. If, I mean, if you brought in a high-name guy from Europe, I mean, maybe he'd want that 10. Yeah, or, or, or he wants to not, or whatever, you know, right. there's certain, that's right, certain certain numbers go with certain situations. So and he so, called you or texted you? I think he originally texted me. Okay. And I can't remember. I responded, and then he responded, and I was like, this is a waste of time. And I just called him. I said, Daniel, relax. He said, we, we, the thing at that point was we had a couple different players that we were still working on. And I didn't know if we had made any promises to anybody, and I didn't want to say something, now I have to retract and do all that. So I said, just be patient. And so once I knew that it was okay, I just called him and said, hey, you can, if you want the 10, you can take it. Busio did it a similar way. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted the 10. I told him, Boos, like, relax a second, because we got to, like, and then it was available, and I said, okay, you want it, you know. And, and look, I like guys that want to put, you know, a little bit of pressure on themselves to, you know, be that guy, and that's that's great. I'm I'm, I'm good for it. You know, what's funny is, I never even noticed in the game that Daniel was wearing number ten until he just <laughs> mentioned it again. So, honestly, I didn't pay attention to that either. Yeah. I was looking for where people are. So. Yeah. All right. Appreciate the time, sir. And, Definitely. Uh, good luck this weekend, and for all, for a lot more games too. So. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Peter. You know, Thad, the thing about Peter is he's just becoming more human to me all the time. Anytime we interact with him, he's just, you know, I think as he ages, he's just becoming an even more well-rounded manager and a more well-rounded person as well. So, Yeah, I always, I always really relish the times that I get to talk to him when it's not a, uh, hey, why did your team lose kind of moment, you know what I mean? Exactly, when it's a, yeah. It's a little more personable, it's a little more... Get to know the man better, yeah. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I know why some fans have some dislike for him, but I, I really do think that if you got to talk to him more, I think it would be a better appreciation. So hopefully this is a glimpse into some of that, not the deepest interview ever, but again, I think it's uh, it's helpful. And, for sure. Uh, next up is Daniel Shallowy, uh, the newly crowned DS10. Just doesn't have the same ring, we got to admit, right? It doesn't because we're used to it, though. I mean, if it had yeah. started that way, <laughs> you know, I never right. really even thought of him as DS30, but I thought of him as DS20, so it's going to be hard to change that. <laughs> well, Daniel's always a fun interview. He's always smiling. He's got a positive attitude. And, you know, it's it's kind of funny. We were walking over, and, you know, somebody was talking to him about his age, or Daniel mentioned his age, and the guy he was talking to before I pulled him over. And I'm like, 
man, I looked it up. I was like, you're only 27 and you're talking like your legacy already. So we kind of touch on you know what he wants his legacy to be and uh, where he's at with that right now. Yeah. Uh, he's a, he's a sporting KC man. That's for damn sure. <laughs> All right, Daniel, let's, we'll let you, we'll let that interview play. <laughs> All right, uh, we have Daniel Shalloway here on the KC Soccer Journal Shades of Blue podcast. Welcome, Daniel. We appreciate you coming by. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Good to see you guys. It's better to come in and see us because it's out of the sun and the heat. Yes, yes, I can cool down a little bit here. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be 27 by midnight. So anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird. A little it's bit crazy. weird. Yeah. Kansas City. Uh, all right, we, should we get our two questions? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, go with yours. So we've been asking everybody the same question. So... You know, after match, you know, you do a little press thing if you need to, a little uh, shot with the uh, teammates after a win or whatever it might be. But what then do you crave to eat? What's your post-game craving? Ooh, that's tough. I'm super weird with food after games. Sometimes I get exhausted in games and I need to eat, like, right away. And there's times when I, I'm not even hungry for, like, two hours and it's yeah. probably not good at all either <laughs> way but um to crave probably i like we have these wings chicken wings and it would it actually is nice because it's quick and it's just a good option give us a second one okay Sec- you had a wing or two what's what's something else that you might go if to? i want to go something bigger i'd go a burger oh, but okay. i don't like to make like you know like rice and like make like a bowl uh-huh. that's just no after the game you just have to get something quick yeah peter said he wanted wings because he, he goes i don't eat anything after the game not like the players he goes oh but the wings are good yeah peter drinks wine so that's that's, right, exactly. that's his meal yeah, yeah i noticed by training you know i when i first the training facility was built is that a freddy's that's right there or what is that do you ever partake in that after, actually, after practice or is that i don't not think i've against, ever gone to that, that against freddy's. the rules i've been to freddy's but not that one <laughs> not i don't know one. okay <laughs> yeah I, I have tried that one after a game and it took an hour and a half uh, to get the food so yeah that's... <laughs> avoid that location get yeah, it. So after go. a game okay <laughs> all right the the other weird question we're asking today because we don't want to put people on the spot to like compare you and alan and johnny so <laughs> we're asking which defender will score the most goals this year oh i've gotten this question i uh i said fonti okay. i said fonti i've heard a lot of people said danny rosero why why fonti i think fonti knows how to be in the right place and he's gotten to rebounds. He's gotten to uh, to places where he can score. And it's funny because many times we, I, I'm gonna brag about myself, but I, I like to, <laughs> I think I know where I'm going for like rebounds or uh, yeah. when it's like a, a set piece. And many times Fonti comes up obviously, and I notice that we end up going to the same place. So I'm like, hmm, mm, yeah, okay, okay, you 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 know what you're doing. So. So um, I think it's going to be Fonti. Okay, so I've got to go back. Okay. You know, for the fans, it was like, what the hell? Logan exploded in the playoffs last year. To you guys, was that like, oh, we see that every day? Or was it like, same thing? What the hell? Mm. Logan, what's going on, man? Keep it up. But what's going on? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Logan is a very talented player. And um, his mindset last year was um, crazy motivated. And uh, the way he was working was... You know, we, we all saw it. It's just nice that it's amazing that we, he peaked that much in yeah. the playoffs that you were just like, wow. Um, we needed it a lot, and he showed up, and we so appreciate it. And it's so sad that um, he hurt himself oh, in course. the San Luis yeah. game. But I just know that uh, he has that mentality. So he just needs to get healthy and, like, help his recovery with his mentality. Sure. And then we'll happily have him back and have the playoff <laughs> form uh, exactly when it was his birthday in preseason and everybody texted the group chat and everybody said happy birthday mr playoffs happy birthday playoffs <laughs> so it was good it was a joke between us too nice if, if he stayed healthy were you gonna go all the way if logan stayed healthy yeah. i mean probably a better chance That's no but, pressure but <laughs> it's uh it's just because you have more options i yeah, think right. um, tim came in and did v- very well in houston um it just didn't play good enough in houston and um it's just end of the season sometimes it doesn't quite fall your way even though you play well yes correct it's so difficult so um, I, we just have to be make the playoffs and be in the mix and then do our best and then even then you don't know if it's gonna fall for you yeah. all right we have to ask uh ds10 yes what made you decide you wanted that i um i've said it many times 
that I I played as a number ten as a you know as a kid, but uh, that's totally different. Um, when I first started playing professionally, I picked number thirty because that was available, and then I was like, hmm, I could be twenty at one point and then get to ten. But then I got to 20 quickly, and then I liked it. I liked it a lot. And to get to 10 is very difficult. And not everybody gets to 10. And I'm just happy that I've done a lot at this club. And I asked Peter for his permission if he's allowing me to get it, if he thinks I'm, I'm ready for it. And he said yes. And um, I, it means a lot to me. And I want to I wanna do well in it. And um, I think the team is happy for me as well. So... I'm just a little kid getting these jerseys, giving it to friends, <laughs> families. So it's it's good to good to have it. All right, that, that, that leads me to another question. But uh, before I get to that one, you're not the traditional ten role. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you don't care. You just want the role. You want the number because it's that that means something to a club. Yeah, I don't think it's. If I look around in the world, does it's it's. I don't see a pattern anymore with the number ten. I mean. Yes, it used to be the that position in the middle, but there's so many wingers now, so many forwards who have the number ten. I describe it more as the importance of the player in the within the squad, and uh, I'm happy that I got to the point where I'm I can lead this team, and that number represents it for me right now. And um, as I said, I'm super excited. You, you kind of led into this question though. What, what's the favorite jerseys you've traded for? Favorite jerseys? I've traded, actually only traded with uh, all the Hungarian players who played in the league. Okay. So, I don't know. I was never good at asking for someone's jersey. I don't know why, because I, I admire so many players who I played against. And uh, I remember I wanted to get, uh, like, two players' jerseys in the league that was... I was very excited about it and I just never asked for it. One was Almiron, when we played Almiron back then. Should have asked for it. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was uh, Castellanos. After he beat me to the golden boot, I was like, I got to get this guy's jersey. <laughs> and then he didn't play against us and left for Europe. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but even with the national team, when I played against England, I should have asked for so many guys' jerseys. And I just, right. I couldn't, I don't know. I just got to work on it, so... Wait, you're a little shy? Yeah, I guess you could say that. I just, I don't know what, I just don't know what is the situation when it's correct to ask for it. So if we win, that guy's pissed. Is it okay to go and ask for a jersey? If, if we lose, is it okay that I'm thinking about getting someone's jersey? I don't know. So I'm, I'd rather not do it at all. So that's where I am. Gotcha, you know, gotcha. Yeah, I get, I get you, man. I would be in the same boat. Like, what's the proper etiquette? Exactly, so... And I, I've seen actually like people deliver jerseys to the locker room from yeah. the locker room. So maybe that's it. You just gotta like send Flaherty or, or Sammy. Yeah, they do. It. They've they've done that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So who knows if this is your forever club? I'm sure you have multiple ambitions. Uh, but you know, Johnny's thinking about his legacy with Sporting. He's up there in the scoring ranks. You know, number three, I think, right now. Do you, is that something you think about your legacy that you're going to leave here at Sporting? Yes, definitely. 27 now? Definitely, yes. I want to. Yes, 27 now. Uh, time flies, as we said. <laughs> yeah. But um, yes, obviously, I want to you know, break records. And as a team, I want to win trophies. And that's um, always going to be in the back of your head. And um, you just want to be remembered. And you want people to think that you were a good player. And um, I think I'm trying to do my best with sporting. I had my ups, I had my downs, but overall I had I think I've I've done well and this club means so much to me. And I just hope that uh, whenever I finish here, it's gonna be that fans think the same way that they were just as imp I was just as important to them as they are important to me. So uh, it looks like Fonte just called you and a picture of him popped up on your phone. Do you yeah. have any embarrassing pictures of fellow teammates on your phone? I have a lot, <laughs> yes. I have a lot. I'm terrible at it and because I I'm, I actually take pictures, yeah, <laughs> and then they complain that I have the embarrassing pictures. But um, yes, I have it always saved for the right moment. Gotcha. It's good thing this is an audio podcast, not a video. Yes, yes, yes. I I cannot. I could show it, but it's not going to be pleasing for Obviously. anybody listening. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> All right. I, I you know you talk about the he was asking about your legacy and stuff. Uh, do, do you want to see your name up on that wall? Yes, of course. That's a dream, and um, there's many amazing players there, and. Um, 
you know, for example, that um, all-time goal-scoring record, that's the one you, you want to climb up on because that's something that um, means a lot to me and I think it uh, can help the team. So me and Johnny are always racing to the top of that. So, right. um, Do you know where you're at right now? I am fourth, but uh, soon Johnny will... Yes, he does know where he's yeah. at. <laughs> Johnny, will, uh, Johnny and I will probably take over Dom soon, and then um, when Johnny's done, I have some time. <laughs> I like how he slowed and chose his words. When he's there. done, I have time to catch up on him. So, But uh, he... Johnny motivates me, you know, every day. He, we, we've always had this competition, and we are, you know, best friends, but we always try to be better than the other one, and it's, I think it's very fun. You know, Robert asked earlier, he didn't know if this was going to be your forever club. I, I, I've talked to you before, and I kind of feel like you want this to be your forever club. I mean, obviously, if Manchester calls for, you know, need a new winger out there, maybe you go, but I think, I think you would be happy being here for the rest of your career. Yeah, look, like sporting for me is, is, is a home and it's become a home from, from the first minute and uh, I'm glad I could take the right steps from academy to make it to the first team. And, you know, you just, you just never know because sports in general is very difficult to tell, but I am very happy here and I'm glad that um, I'm being valued as well. And, um, just excited for this season to start and um, to do something great. Well, hey, we value your time. We appreciate <laughs> you, you spending some of that with us. And, um, you know, we'll see you down the line of the season multiple times, I'm sure. Yep. Yes. Appreciate the time, Daniel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Take care. And that was Mr. Shallowy, man. I, I enjoyed that. You know, um, what I didn't do is, and, and, and you can probably tell me right now, and, and I'll be the ignorant one out of you and me and, and the listeners, I didn't want to look up where Hungary was at in the World Cup standings or if they qualified or disqualified. So help me out here. Where are they? You're not supposed to ask a question you don't already have the answer to. <laughs> That's why I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't paid that close attention to how Hungary's doing since he's not been called up to it. Right, exactly. To the team yeah. lately. So and I'm sure he still has ambitions that way, of course. He's only 27 and he's got time to get back into that picture. And you know, I hope he does. Yeah, all it takes is just getting hot again. Uh, yeah, I think, and that would he would stand a chance. Uh, Hungary does usually have a lot of pretty good players, so that's uh, so it's not easy. Uh, all right, so that was the three pod interviews we did. Uh, I did a little while everybody else was listening to Vermees press conference. I snuck outside and talked to some of the players as they were kind of settling in, and uh, I talked to Eric Tommy. Nice. And, if uh, anybody who listened to our pod over the weekend, Shades of Blue, at, uh, post the Houston game, Robert and I were kind of giving him a lot more credit for that uh, dribble into the danger zone and scoring that goal than uh, Cody was. Because uh, a lot of people are like, oh, the, the defenders just fell back. And I kind of talked about how I felt that he kind of helped maneuver those or, you know, force the the defenders back and you were saying similar things. And I talked to Tommy and at first he says, well, you know, I got lucky. They didn't close me down. And then <laughs> the more I talked to him, I said, you know, were you trying to, you know, give them dilemmas and not problems? Cause a dilemma is where uh, somebody has to make a decision between two right. equally bad problems. And a problem is you have one solution. So if you give them dilemmas, it causes them to potentially open up and make mistakes more and the way he was maneuvering and kind of dribbling in there i felt that he did that and he the more i talked to him the more he said he kind of like appreciated that i was recognizing that he did that <laughs> nice nice always good to feel that you have been um backed up by the man uh, the player himself there you go good for your ego then yeah it actually <laughs> it definitely was um uh, I got a little chat with Tim Melia, and we we discussed whether or not we wanted uh, St. Louis or Houston to win the the uh, Concacaf Champions Cup match tonight. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, in Peter's interview he did with the, everybody, you know, while you were out there doing some of those, he talked about Melia and a little bit of insight into how Melia got signed and who uh, helped him uh, decide to sign Tim Melia to a permanent contract. So that's a little interesting story that Peter tells. We will be doing a little wrap of of some of the more interesting tidbits from uh, Peter's conference with the press. So be looking out for that. And so I know you're going to do a little wrap up on that. The uh, before this all really got kicked off, we had a press conference from Jake Reed, and he discussed the new the lights. Uh, 
a few other things that you know they've hopefully fixed some of the things that uh you know little things like sinks broken or whatever it was in bathrooms i don't know what they all were he says he thinks that they've taken care of most if not all of those uh what let's see i was trying to remember is there anything else uh the uh messy game at arrowhead is a near full sellout if not a sellout now i don't remember the exact words that were said so i think he said it was uh already north of seventy thousand, somewhere mm -hmm. in that realm and he doesn't know the exact number they're going to count to make it a sellout but it will be a sellout it'll be the largest soccer game in the state of missouri uh when it takes place so hopefully that will be broken by copa america u.s versus uruguay this summer and then broken in the world cup depending of course how many seats they have to eliminate to make the field bigger and that was another thing the field will not be the world cup size when uh messi and sporting sorry inner miami and sporting play each other come, no you had it right come april right. <laughs> when messi and sporting play if yeah. again if messi plays there's always a chance he doesn't uh yeah they won't have that in they won't have the field the right correct size by then Dimensions, or by copa yeah. america this weekend or this yeah. this summer right this weekend that would be way too early uh, so yeah it's i so actually i think it will be the largest i think the messy game will be the largest because they will have to have less Take seats. Out some seats yeah i mean i guess there's a chance that every last possible seat is filled for those games where maybe not quite every possible seat is filled for the Miami game but it should be pretty close sro gotta consider that staying room only do they have that at Arrowhead? Yeah, I don't know. Like you said, though, they're going to try to cram as many people in there as they can. <laughs> uh, for increasingly large numbers of dollars, too, I'm sure. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, that's one thing that Reed admitted. You know, I mean, yeah, we wanted to make the game more accessible to fans, more people. But, you know, it's also more money in the end. So. Yeah, because if it had stayed at children's mercy park the seats would have been being sold for a couple thousand dollars probably right. if not more but that would have all been resale to season ticket holders or people who had gotten in early to get tickets we're at arrowhead they might still be a high ticket price but it's that money is going to sporting and the chiefs so hey uh just a shout out to the sporting communications team you know we very much appreciate the openness and the availability that they make uh for media so that's good. And uh, I encourage more media to come out this year. It's, you know, always funny because we'll see some of these people maybe later in the year. Some of them we won't see at all. <laughs> yeah, there was, I don't, something like 70, 80 people there today. Yeah, something like that. And in an average sporting game, there will be the same four, five, six people there. <laughs> A little more, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm being a little pessimistic on that. But again, kudos to the communication staff, PR staff, whatever the right exact term is. Patrick can correct me again, I'm sure. Uh, but they, they did a good job putting it on, and they were, again, very helpful with getting us the interviews and making players available and making it all work really well. So, And a shout-out to uh, uh, Cody Bradley, our cohort, he was uh, doing some video, so be, lo be looking out for that as well. And uh, he was getting the answer to one of our standard questions we came up with through asking everybody. So look for that as well. At that Cody, though. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he gets that video. If not, I will try to maybe uh, piece some of it together. But anyway, appreciate everybody for listening. Uh, three separate pod interviews today, and I think it went well. Let us know. And we are out. Okay.